God's love, elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. I'm going to talk about you. You're talking about me? Well, I'm talking about God. I'm talking about a characteristic that we find in God. But since you have God's nature in you, you're a partaker of divine nature, I'm talking about you. So I'm calling this message, Generous God, Generous People. And so let's look at this verse from Isaiah 32. A generous person devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. That talks about the nature of the person. A person who is generous is planning and scheming to do generous activities, generous things. And then there's something about the characteristic of generosity that when the storms of life comes, being generous helps you to stand in the storms of life. Of course, God ultimately is the great generous one. God so loved that he gave. And, and so generosity comes in many forms. I see so many generous people. People are generous with your time. People are generous with a smile. People who have, uh, you know, you, you're full of generosity with, with your finances. You're generous towards other people. You have an attitude of generosity. You know, the focus of our church is not to teach a whole bunch of subjects, but really the focus of our church is to unveil Jesus Christ. So you don't often hear us talk about, well, we're focusing on family, so we are focusing on the gifts of the Spirit, or we're focusing on healing. No, our focus is on Jesus. But in focusing on Jesus, here's what the Scripture says, in His light we see light. So when it comes to whether it's the gifts of the Spirit or family life or, or business ideas, all of those are revealed. We see light in those areas in the light of Jesus. So we are not also known as a church that teaches about money and success all the time because we unveil Jesus. But in Jesus, we have success and we have a great future. And so, and also, you know, we are concerned because so much of teaching that is done in the church world about money, let's be honest, let's take the blinders off. A lot of it is based on old covenant manipulative thinking that, you know, you have to give to God and then God's going to give to you. And you can manipulate people. A lot of people are easily, you know, swayed that way. I was talking to a pastor a couple of weeks ago, there was other things that, you know, after the revelation of God's grace, I can't stomach it anymore. He said he was, he was teaching the people that, that you know, if, if our church is going to live under an open heaven, then, then if 20% only of the people are tithing, then we only have a 20% open heaven. But if 50% tithe and give, we have a 50% open heaven. Of course, see, see, don't look shocked when I say that this is common teaching. Some of you come from churches that have been teaching this for years. Manipulative teaching about money is everywhere. Just watch Christian television. Watch any telethon. It, it's manipulation. If you give this much, then we will do this much for a person in Israel, or we'll do this much for a person, and then God will release His blessing if you give this much. If you give $91 every month, then God will release Psalm 91 in your life. You know, people feel like, well, I need all the insurances I can get. You see, it's, it's, it's coercing you. Oh, are you one of the ones who close heaven? Oh, I don't want to be sitting beside you. No wonder I'm having no blessing because you're closing up heaven for me. You know, you'd be amazed how many charismatic Christians are used to this kind of teaching. Pastor Peter, what are you talking about? You mean you don't believe all this stuff? I believe none of it. I believe we are blessed because of Jesus, what he has done. I don't be believe that buy the, buy the blessing with money. So, so I'm saying to you, but you see, sometimes people can get used to bad foods. It's like kids. They love donuts and ketchup and french fries and candies. They love it. It makes them happy. But is it good for them? No, you see, even Christians, we can get so accustomed to manipulative teaching which causes often a great response. 
I mean, there was a significant number of years in my life when I was very good at using teaching. And I did it honestly. I wasn't trying to deceive anybody, but I was putting a little bit of condemnation, a little bit of manipulation in there, and we got great offerings. So people say, well, why don't you do one of those again? Well, maybe I could find one of those old socks and put them off on some Sunday, but I don't want to do it because I believe God's grace is better. And, and so what's my point in all this? And then, of course, what happens is because some people have been exposed to manipulative teaching, then they become apologetic. Oh, we don't want to talk about money in our church at all because, you know, there, there's some people out there that are doing this or that. So, oh, we, 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 don't, we don't talk about it at all. And they look very holy. We don't mention money in our church. Really? Well, you're not like Jesus because Jesus mentioned money more than just about anything. So, what, what have we learned from this? Number one, don't fall for manipulation. Number two, let's teach. Let's talk about generosity and time, in attitude and finances. Let's talk about it God's way. And remember this, expect increase. Expect that God wants to help you. God is on your side. He will guide you. He will help you. You have the mind of Christ. Well, there's these two extremes. On the, on the one hand, you have a manipulative approach to money. And that's what I'm talking about here, where preachers sometimes uh, giving various promises that they have no business to give, that if you, uh, you know, do so much, if you give $91, famously some have said, well, then Psalm 91 and all its blessings will come to you. And who wouldn't want all those blessings, especially if they're only $91 a month? But that kind of an approach is really contrary to the finished work of Jesus and to the revelation of the gospel. So you, that, that's the one side. Then on the other extreme, you have this <laughs> holier than thou attitude. Well, our church doesn't talk about money at all. And, and, and both extremes will cause us to miss the blessing and the provision and the wisdom that God has for every one of us. And so Jesus spoke a lot about this subject, and so did the other writers of Scripture. And so we're going to go back to that teaching in a moment. But first of all, I want to let you know I want to hear from you. If you have prayer requests, you can call the Grace Prayer Center. Someone will pray in, uh, with you, believe with you, and also share your praise reports. Or you can contact me online. You see the information there. And the third way that a lot of people are availing themselves of, just send me a text message. Send me a text. And I, I have a phone here that's dedicated just to your text messages. And uh, uh, when, when you say something, I want to send you something in response. So make sure you include your, your address and your phone number so we can call you back if you want to, but also share your prayer request or your praise report or, or whatever else you want to say. If you're asking for something, then, then uh, please do that on the text phone uh, that's available to you. I hope that you have our magazine, Impact. This is the latest edition right here. Um, where we talk about uh, God's love touching the Buddhist world. I, I think you'll enjoy having that in your home. And then so much more information, so many more good things. But right now, let's get to the teaching again. Here we go. Second Corinthians 9. Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver pretty strong. You know, I tried to ratchet down a little bit, say like, God delights you know, in a cheerful giver, or, or God takes pleasure. I mean, that's close. But you know, I have to be true to the Scripture. You can go and look at the Greek word here, and it's the word agape, which is unconditional love of God beyond any human love. So what this is really teaching us that giving that is done with joy, not from manipulation or grudge or necessity, God agapes this. God loves it. And any other type of giving, it is not compatible with God's agape love. And so what's the opposite? The opposite is grudge. Come on, you know what grudge is like. It's like, I feel pressured. I'll do it, but... I don't really want to do it. It's like, 
Well, if you don't, if you don't help us now, this church is not going to make it. You want to take that to your grave that we failed because of you. And okay, I'll give something then. Pressure, grudge, force, constraint, necessity. What is it? Well, it, it means like you got to do this. You got to stand with us now. Okay, then. You know, God doesn't love that, doesn't enjoy it. It's like if you tell your kids, clean your room. That's grudge. Oh, I have a headache, Dad. Oh, I feel a little bit of a fever. I have pain in my chest. But then suddenly you say to the same group of kids, let's go for ice cream. And the healing power just hits the house and, and everybody says, yeah, 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 let's go. And, and, and what the Bible says, God loves when there's joy, when there's hilarity in it. But when there's this kind of coaxing and manipulating, if you don't do this, if you don't give to God, I tell you this, God, your car is going to break down and your refrigerator is going to break down and your house will burn down. So you better, you know, who enjoys that? You, you know, but this is in every area of life whether reading the Bible, praying, worshiping, whatever. God loves things that are done cheerfully. You know, one time I listened to a preacher and he said, well, he's trying to teach about the fear of God. If it wasn't for fear of hell and fear of missing the rapture, I wouldn't even be a Christian. And some people actually clapped. I didn't. I'm thinking, buddy, you missed me. I'm not a Christian because I'm afraid of hell or missing the rapture. I actually like Jesus. I, I'm actually in. I like to be wrapped up in God's love. I like to be the beloved of God. I'm in. I love Jesus' life flowing through me. You don't have to coerce me. You don't have to twist me around like a pretzel to get me to behave right. I actually like being saved. I'm a volunteer. So, so God loves a cheerful giver. You know, that's why the day of Pentecost is so beautiful, because they just gave spontaneously. Some gave everything they had. Some gave almost all of it. Others gave various portions, but they just gave because they saw the Holy Spirit come and 3,000 people received the Lord and, and they just became so generous. That's why we love, you know, that mafioso, Don Corleone Zacchaeus of Jericho, uh, when he had God's love touch his life, well, when he experienced God's love, what happened to him? He became so generous that he spontaneously said, I want to give 400% to everybody. Now, he stands in contrast to the religious young man, the rich young ruler who was like, I don't know, I've done so much. I've done everything. I've kept all the commandments. But then here comes the mafioso. And he said, I, I just want to share it. See, see, God loves a hilarious, cheerful giver. Are you happy to be saved? Are you happy that you belong to Jesus? Do I have to threaten you? Do I have to bully you? Or are you a volunteer? Are you in on your own? And so yeah, God loves that. Then, 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 then God loves what his grace produces in us. Look at this here. I'm reading all these scriptures are from the same chapter. We make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality or their generosity. According to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely giving. Notice what it says here. It's because of the grace of God. Some people think that God's grace makes you kind of, you know, sloppy or lazy or I don't have to participate. Oh, it doesn't matter if I give or pray or serve God at all. No, to the people in Macedonia, the grace of God caused them to be more giving, more sharing. They had more fervor. They had more energy. They had more power. They had more liberality. It's just imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift. They, they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. I mean, they were imploring. It's like, it's like, and I said, take the money. And he says, no, no, no. And he says, okay, okay. No, no, take it. I'm, I'm, I'm forcing it in every pocket. I'm trying to shove money down his pocket. He says, no, it's okay. Imploring us. What, what caused such generosity? 
Was it because the preacher said to them, if you don't become generous, I tell you, God's anger is going to come on you. There's going to be no blessing in your life. No, it was God's grace. God's unmerited favor had great result in their lives. Grace produced joy, generosity, willingness, beyond ability. They gave of themselves. It says later on, the great motivation, verse 9, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Here goes again, the grace of Jesus, the favor of Jesus. See, grace makes you take the foot off the brake. Some, some people think that grace makes you step, step on the brake and say, we better slow down. We shouldn't be so committed to the Lord. No, God's grace, it makes you say, let's go for it. I reign in life through the abundance of the grace of God. When it comes to salvation, when it comes to healing, when it comes to your ministry, when it comes to finances, when it comes to every area of life, you're motivated by God's grace, which means I am conscious every day that my loving Heavenly Father looks out for me. He is working through me. I am motivated by this. Once I'm freed from self-effort, then I'm free to take the limits off. You know, there was a preacher. He's been gone for a few years. His name was Kenneth Hagin. When he talked about money, he pray, took an offering, he would always say, he'd always, almost always pray the same prayer. He would say like this, he says, we believe every need is met and money left over. I like that. We believe every need is met and money left over. I can hear somebody say, well, but you know, I struggle in this area. It's not been my experience. Well, it could be different reasons. Maybe you followed some manipulative teaching that set you back and disappointed you. But, but here's how I think about that. Don't adjust Christ's finished work to our experience. Adjust our experience to Christ's finished work. In Christ's finished work, you have all the forgiveness, all the love, all the power, all the healing that you need, and also you have financial provision. Now, if you haven't experienced that, then don't reduce Christ's finished work. Don't talk as if Christ's finished work were less, but instead say, if that has not been my experience, I want to raise my experience. I'm not going to drag down what Jesus has done to meet me where I'm at. I'm going to see myself lifted up to Christ's finished work, that that will become my experience. Oh, that's great. I'm going to ask the producer to put that statement back on there on the screen for a moment. Don't adjust Christ's finished work and the provision of Christ's finished work to our experience, but let our experience be adjusted to Christ's finished work. You know, this, this touches so many areas. Sometimes uh, people feel it's a lack of compassion. They feel, oh, no one understands me when we are teaching about what Christ has provided. So we may teach about that Christ has provided joy. He's provided for an abundant life. He's provided for healing. He's provided for wisdom and helping your finances. So if, if you're not experiencing that, to some people it feels almost condemning, like a put down. Oh, I can't relate to what that preacher is saying because this is what's going on in my life. I've, I've had this setback and I've had this disappointment and I've failed in this area. So it's almost like, oh, I, I, don't, I can't listen to this victorious message because it doesn't line up with what I've experienced. But, but don't turn the dial. Don't make that move in that direction. Christ's finished work is here. It's what Jesus Christ has done. He has defeated evil principalities and powers. He has provided for blessing and wisdom and help in every area of life. In short, abundant life. So if you haven't experienced that, don't be offended. Don't feel like, oh, that Peter Younger, you're, you're, you're not relating to where I'm at. 
See, would you think that I would be relating to where you're at if I was describing, saying, oh, I know some of you have faced bankruptcies and you're so disappointed and you're under a cloud of depression. I'm not negating all kinds of negative realities that, that you may be facing, but frankly, I don't think you need to turn on the television to hear some preacher tell you what you already know, that, that you're facing um, some hard times and things are not good and, 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 and negative experiences. What we do, we teach what Jesus has provided so that everyone, all boats will rise. Everyone will be lifted more and more. It may not all happen at once, but more and more and more and more. We're lifted it, so that what Christ has provided becomes our experience. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for your great love. I thank you that you're compassionate towards every person. And for that person whose experience is so different, Jesus, said, what you have provided. I thank you for the gift of faith right now. I thank you for help in the name of Jesus. I, I, I like to hear from you. Please contact me. Go to the call the Grace Prayer Center or call, um, go online. Or, or just send me a text message if I can pray for you and believe with you. Let me make a couple of announcements. And I, I, we just released this teaching, Success in Life by the Grace of God, based on the first six chapters of the book of Nehemiah. And I would argue they are among the most helpful chapters. And those six chapters together give us possibly more of ideas and principles for success in every area of life, in leadership, in business, in relationships, in every area than any other package, if you wish, of six chapters in the Bible. And so I expound on these in these six CDs. You can order that and the information is there on the screen. So go ahead and get that. Maybe it's been there several times throughout the program. And, and so you can just go ahead and, and ask for that and you'll get that. And also uh, don't forget to ask for our magazine if you don't have it already. Uh, full of good articles that will encourage and lift your spirit. But right now we got just a few moments left. And uh, would you watch this? It's a ministry with a heart as big as the whole wide world. It started in a small missions chapel. That fair first service, I just had one goal in mind that somebody would receive Christ as their savior. I hoped to preach for 10 minutes, but I didn't last that long. I didn't have enough to say, but at the end of it, two people came to the Lord. The vision only grew stronger. And a couple of years later, Peter Youngren had moved to Providence, Rhode Island, Zion Bible Institute. It was during that time that I saw a vision and, and it, it changed my life. It, it put such a passion in me to touch the world with the gospel. In a way I became like an untamed tiger. I just wanted to break out of the, whatever confinement I was in. And sometimes that confinement was within the, the Christian church where we were so much about ourselves and reach out to those who had never known Jesus. That passion has continued unabated for 40 years with some of the largest gospel outreaches ever, especially in countries that are normally considered impossible. Just like the apostle Paul, Peter seeks to gain a foothold for the gospel by first meeting with political and religious leaders. Amazingly, God opens the heart of prime ministers, presidents, governors, and leaders of various religions. Friendship festivals are just that, events often held in large stadiums where the good news of Jesus Christ is presented uncompromisingly and yet in an attitude of respect and friendship towards all. Gospel Revolution seminars have impacted 356,000 leaders and counting, an extensive training that reintroduced pastors, bishops, and leaders to the simplicity and yet profound power of Christ's gospel. Through media, believers are enlisted in the cause of Christ, and many hear the gospel often for the very first time. Newborn believers, more than 16 million over the last 25 years, need nurturing. And so the teaching booklet, Salvation, God's Gift to You, becomes their first introduction to the Christian faith. 
All this, plus ongoing ministry in Israel, Bible schools in different parts of the world, long-term missionaries, and much more is made possible by partners. Partnership is more than giving. It is people who stand shoulder to shoulder for the gospel. The VIP family are the monthly partners who form the backbone of the ministry. Because of the VIP family, we're able to say yes to the challenges that come to us because we know we have people who stand shoulder to shoulder uh, with this ministry and they believe like I believe that everyone has a basic human right to hear the gospel. You know, it, it, it's a great tragedy to me that millions of people are born, they live and they die and never hear the gospel. But I'm thankful for the many who are rallying to the cause who have discovered that it's a real blessing to become involved with the gospel. And so thank you to the VIP family. Make your life count for souls, for eternity, for the gospel. Jesus said that when we give for his sake and for the gospels, we receive a maximum return. Truly those who bless Jesus Christ and his gospel are blessed. Call now, 416-745-1820 or give online at VeterYoungren.org. Thank you for taking action right now. Uh, please go to your telephone. Uh, I can just say to you without belaboring the point that we, we really need help right now. Whatever you can give, please share that. And we need many more to join in the VIP family, visionaries in partnership, people who stand with us every month. Uh, and so you see the information on the bottom of the screen, how you can get involved, how you can participate. And I say a big, big thank you. Earlier on in the program today, I made a statement as I was teaching that God's grace makes us take the foot off the brakes. Now, maybe our producer can put that right up there. And, and what I mean with that is that the more we discover God's grace, His unmerited favor, His unearned blessings that we didn't earn by any religious effort of our own, the more we discover that it doesn't make us lazy or, or laid back or passive. Instead, we take the foot off the brake and say, let's do more. Let's believe for more. Let's Let's trust God in a bigger way. Let's even get involved in world missions and, and, and to touch other lives. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Believe God in a big way. Take the foot off the brake because you are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A 2W1 or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.